Why aren't there many skyscrapers in Europe? Think about it. Despite being one of the most developed, densely populated, and economically prosperous continents, Europe has surprisingly few skyscrapers, especially compared to Asia and North America. Of the 218 skyscrapers constructed on the continent to date, a majority of them, a whopping 66% of them, are located in just five cities. Think about it. London, the skylines of Paris, Frankfurt, Moscow, and Istanbul. So why have other major European cities not really embraced the skyscraper, you might be asking? Why aren't there numerous towers in Europe, towering above us, making your neck hurt when you try and look all the way at the top of them? Well, despite being one of the most advanced, densely peopled lands, Europe has unexpectedly few towers. For comparison, across the countries, number one, China has 3,000 plus skyscrapers in the United States, just about 900 in the UAE, 314. New York, the most populous city in the U.S., just for example, is home to at least 101 that are taller than 650 feet, 198 meters. Why then have the great cities of Europe not embraced the skyscraper? Without the enormous inner civic space and bottom portions that these quote-unquote smart constructions provide, how does Europe survive? And is everything about to alter in a world that's becoming less urbanized? First, a bit of history to explain what the heck's happening here. The first towers ever grew to prominence in the 19th century, relatively lately in human cities. First in Chicago and subsequently then in New York, but many European metropolises had really already been built by those points with enormous public spaces in big major structures, leaving limited space for large new constructions. Most European cities at the time were also more irregularly zoned and didn't see this huge demand for underground space in key locations that typically drives the development of high rises. Additionally, as North America's power and influence grew, a creative rivalry emerged between Europeans and Americans who considered the European class system as outdated, who believed some American principles were undermining European traditions as a way of life. And as a result, each mainland became, you could say, cautious of mimicking the other's generalities. While North America and the US aimed to become more of a model of the new age, Europe sought to save its heritage. While this explains why skyscraper construction did not originally catch on in Europe, what explains why the mainland has held back? What's interesting in Europe is the decline of towers really began in the wake of the Second World War. World War II was where you would see that European metropolises began to modernize and replicate the towers that were rising across North America after World War II, the desire to restore what had been destroyed took hold. We'll build it back just like it was. Combine that with the lower population across the area, where high populations tend to drive skyscraper construction, and as a result, over time, the modest structures replaced the structures that could have been saved or restored. Meanwhile, in Eastern Europe, the expanding Soviet Union tended to repetitiously build structures that sought to rehouse much of the population. Without a significant zoning set of regulations in place, the 1960s themselves saw numerous structures in the megacity demolished to make way for large, ultra-modern structures that had little regard for architectural or artistic value. Recognizing the damage this style of redevelopment was doing to the megacities, numerous prominent engineers at the time called this style of construction Brusselization and lobbied to introduce new planning rules. These regulations against Brusselization significantly limited scales of new structures and needed major facades to be restored and incorporated into new developments. They didn't want that ugly. And so you could say in response to this, metropolises were scared of these soulless new style of structures and they set away controlled sections like Paris. So in conclusion, today, by the launch of the 21st century, stations were softening across the mainland as architectural trends moved down from box-like structures towards future unique designs. And since the early 2000s, Major financial centers such as London, Paris, Moscow, Istanbul, and Frankfurt have seen multiple towers rise in response to rising demand for marketplace space in their centers. By contrast, smaller European metropolises have made more modest expansions that have shifted their focus to the terrain and improving inhabitants' living standards. It's a shift in focus that's led to our buildings being aesthetically and structurally different. In recent years, municipal regions in Scandinavia and Central Europe have consistently ranked among the highest in the world for sustainability, happiness, and well-being, all while maintaining relevance for the public stewardship. Nonetheless, skyscraper construction in today's metropolises is no longer solely motivated by economic growth. 
with over 60% of the global population set to be living in civic areas by 2030, domestic towers are now rising in elevation, particularly in Asia and North America. Millions are migrating to metropolises, which helps drive the demand for domestic space that's frequently met with high-rise structures. Europe itself isn't really vulnerable to this new phenomenon, particularly in such a heavily globalized world and with the mainland's desire to keep up with progress and profitable growth of China and the US. Down those same lines, Europe may actually witness a skyscraper collapse in the next set of decades, still with entire civic centers now being designated as historically significant and the desire to preserve as much of the important culture as possible. It's definitely a unique phenomenon of why Europe doesn't really build skyscrapers and is less likely to in the future. Speaking of cost and people, are you into unique destinations and projects? Check out Turkmenistan, the North Korea of Central Asia, channel link in the description, or check out the video on your screen right now. Make sure you subscribe to Around the Amazing World for more updates and mega mega projects.